welcome to High School Soccer on WOSN. Alongside Brady Overholt, I'm Evan Skilleter. Jacob O'Neill on the camera here in Walpock. As we have a regional semifinal for you in Division Three. The Seattle Glendorf Titans taking on Riverdale Falcons. Brady, excited to be with you today. This is a matchup that, uh, well, on paper, it looks like Riverdale has their work cut out for them, but it's deep in playoff time. It's beautiful weather. It's a turf surface. Uh, it could be as even as it gets. Right, yeah, you can't ask for better weather. It's awesome weather. We're, you know, November 1st and 60, 60 65 degrees out on turf. Uh, it, it looks like, a, a you know, an awesome field and going to be in a, hopefully a good game for us. Titans come into tonight 17 1 and 2 overall. Riverdale 12 5 and 2 on the Riverdale side. They'll be wearing the white uniforms with the blue shorts tonight. They've scored 45 goals this season. They've given up 20. That's enough for 2.3 goals per game. And in order to get to this point, they've knocked off here on Allen East, Van Buren, and Bluffton. That Bluffton game actually went on penalty kicks, so a tough one there for the Falcons. The Titans, on the other hand, have taken care of business, as we said, in 17 of 20 games. And as a matter of fact, all 17 of those games have been shutouts. So out of 20 games they've played, they've had 17 shutouts. They've given up a total of nine goals. Uh, two of those goals were, or excuse me, eight of those goals were against two Division I opponents in Anthony Wayne and Perrysburg. And then they also tied uh, Liberty Pen or I'm sorry, Archbold at that point this season. So they didn't give up a single goal in the Western Buckeye League. And Brady, one thing to think about here with this Ottawa Canadian team, they played in, the, in Division Three playoffs, but that WBL is primarily Division Two schools, big schools that they play against all year long. They didn't give up a single goal. Yeah, and we're we're in the year two of this too with them. They they've controlled for the past two years. A uh, very good uh, junior class last year, and a lot of obviously returning starters this year. And, and uh, yeah, they're out of their, you know, their their schedule is primarily D D two, and as you mentioned, they're one of the few teams that does pick up some uh, Toledo D one schools. A lot of the WBL teams don't even do that, so they definitely keep a strong schedule. Rightfully so, they're a great program, and uh, it, it's proven as far as they've gotten in the tournament the past few years. The Titans will start with Emma Brinkman, Carly Brinkman, Carson Perford, Bree Douglas, Claire Beach, Mackenzie Recker, Savannah Recker, Madeline Hovis, Lily Hazelman, and Micah Aldrich. This one's crossed into the box and gobbled up by the goalkeeper, Angelina Sierra for Riverdale. They also start with Maddie Biltoff, Maya Frey, Eden Barnes, Lily Farrow, Brooke Durnberger, Mariah Bonham, Kennedy Phelps, Chloe Powell, Allison Woodruff, and Shay Berger. Titans were led this season in scoring by McKenna Seifker with 21 goals and Bree Douglas with 21 goals. Douglas, just a junior. Seifker, just a sophomore. So this Titan team certainly going nowhere. Led an assist by Lily Hazelman, who is a senior. With six goals and 15 assists this season for Riverdale. Their leading scorers were Maya Frey and Mariah Bonham, both with 11 goals. Frey added eight assists with those. Yeah, the, the statistics we were just going through before the broadcast with, with this OG team is kind of, kind of crazy. Uh, you know, being a coach in the past, to have f five girls over 10, 10 goals each and four or five girls with a double-digit assist, you know, it's, it's just they're, they're a scoring team. And when they get going, they will they can put four or five away real quick. The Titans, that's Michael Aldrich. Aldrich, some good footwork to get around a couple defenders. Here sends it out wide. Douglas. Douglas out, and it's last touch by Douglas. So it'll be a goal kick for the Falcons. And the Falcons knocking off Bluffton at Bluffton in penalty kicks on Saturday. Before that, it was a 2-1 win over Van Buren, and then two shutouts in the playoffs. Their opening round matchup was against Huron, which they won 7-0. And then Allen East in the second round, they knocked them off three to zero. Two six nothing wins for Ottawa Glandorf as they took care of Kaleida in the first round, or their first game, excuse me, and then took care of Kenton, WBL foe there, six nothing as well. Yeah, you know, and you mentioned though, uh, Riverdale's kind of on a hot, hot streak. They were 500 halfway through the season, I think, five, five, and two. and rattled off seven straight wins and if there's a time to have to play a team like OG this would be it you're in the regional semifinals and, and really don't have anything to lose you know so 
So if they can keep it going and keep this game interesting, anything can happen in tournament time. As they just walk right through the Riverdale defense, they get the first goal at the 30. There it is, 36.55. I was looking at the wrong side. There it is. 36.55 mark. I believe that was Mackenzie Wrecker with the goal. It was indeed. That's her 12th of the season, and just like that, an early lead for the Titans. Yeah, and, and they've they've really controlled. We're still kind of getting into the, the show, and they've really controlled so much so far, and, and and that's something they do so well because every single uh, girl out there is, is a threat as far as the passing lanes and things like that go. So. Goal is the first tally on the Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alt scoreboard, but Structure Outdoor Ohio, bring your indoors out. Titans back in possession, but that'll go out for a Riverdale throw. Well, a lot of, te of these teams, especially the smaller schools, don't really play on turf much, so this is something both teams will have to adjust to a little bit uh, as we're getting farther along in the tournament. We we uh, we see more of the play on turf fields and stuff, so so some of the bigger schools that play turf all the time, a little different, a little easier for them to adjust, uh, so these two teams... Uh, some that we've seen uh, quite a few throw-ins as we're starting off here. We're working on getting the clock sorted out. But, Brady, I'm, I'm curious. You, you've been a coach for a long time. And I'm sure you've had games that going in, you know your team is, is certainly on paper outmatched. Uh, no one's really giving you a chance. What, how do you get your players motivated? What do you try to do early on in a match to keep yourselves in it? Other than the obvious, which is score a goal. Well, and that's the one thing about uh, soccer. You, you can be outmatched, but but uh, on on paper, but but there's games in soccer where you know you may have a uh, one shot on goal to their twenty, and your one went in, and their twenty did not. So so if you're Riverdale, you're just trying to not allow the the, the multiple goals early on from Ottawa Glendorf and, and work it later into the game. Um, you know, I think this first few minutes they could slow the game down a little bit. And, you know, get a little more, shake some of those nerves and, and get back in here. But if they do allow OG to get a couple more, that's where they've been so deadly these past few years. Falcons send it out for a Titan throw, and they'll do the same here as Hazelman throws it right off the foot of Eden Barnes. Now sent in for Aldrich. She has it knocked away, but again, the Titans there in midfield to get possession back. Falcons almost able to keep it in, but instead, a tight throw. Well, and you do notice Riverdale's is kind of adjusting to this this powerful OG offense with with uh, four four girls playing uh, flat back, and then uh, their outside defender or outside mids are actually pushing back too, and almost giving them six of them uh, just from those outside threats on the OG side. Miranda Miller checks in early for the Falcons. Lily Farrell will make way for her. Brady, we were talking before the broadcast about how this season has kind of flown by, and especially when we consider, and you brought this point up, when, when you consider the fact that it's 65 degrees and sunny, there are not many regional tournament games at you know, this point in the season when we have weather quite like this. Yeah, we had, I think there was one week, at, I think the week we hosted, hosted the Salina Elida game where it, it was pretty cold, but uh, besides that, it's actually been a great fall for these uh, these uh, district finals and regionals. You know, district finals for girls were on Saturday uh, throughout a lot of the state. And again, a beautiful day for soccer. Hazelman quickly fires it in down the left side. It's Clara Beach. Beach with the heavy touch. And, you know, we've seen that a couple times already where you just have these heavy touches. Sometimes when you play on the turf surfaces, the ball, not sometimes, the ball always rolls a little quicker than it does on a grass surface. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, and a lot of times these coaches, and again, I, I, we didn't talk to them before the game, but a lot of times they try to find fields somewhat close to them uh, to practice on a, a night or two that are turf. Uh, just, uh, you know, when I was coaching, the Lima, everyone used Lima's uh, stadium because that was our local turf field in the in Allen County. But uh, it, it just is definitely a g different game to get used to um, for these teams that don't see much turf throughout the year. This 
facility certainly one of the nicest in the area after some improvements in the last few years. Brand new press box, new field surface. Just a, a beautiful spot for tournament action, whether it's soccer or, or football. Great location right off I-75. Yeah, you know, season, uh, during the season, uh, obviously Walpawk has their own soccer stadium. Yes. Uh, you know, so they, they don't really use this themselves. Uh, and, and that's a nice complex in itself on a gra grass pitch. But, but uh, yeah, so so when I was coaching, I didn't really we, – we never played here. We didn't get to, to this point. So seeing this stadium is, uh, is yeah, very impressive. Spending a lot of time on the left side of the field. Titans putting the pressure on the back line of Riverdale early on. Douglas trying to get around a few defenders, but has it taken away. Ball cleared, but only as far as Carly Brinkman. Brinkman's pass taken away by Eden Morris. Well, and that's what what Riverdale will have to try to try to figure out how, how to, you know, even if they can get past that midfield, which has happened a few times, they've really not even got into these four defenders much at all. And and, and it's they're playing kind of one target girl up front, and that's going to be extremely hard. You know, we talk about OG's offense, but obviously their defense very solid too with so few goals given up all year. And yet if you join us a little bit late, Titans have only given up nine goals in 20 matches this season. And I think about nine goals total last year in 22 matches as they got, they, you know, they got to the state finals last year. So, so the past few years, your defense doesn't really get the stats, but <laughs> that's something to be pretty proud of. Dominant team that certainly feels like they are destined for another trip to Columbus. Lower dot com stadium. We had that state final for you last year as the Titans <laughs> fell short. Ball sent in for Clara Beach and then knocked away once again by the Falcons. And you can tell they're very content with just sending the ball out, trying to keep these Titans out of the box. Right. You know, if it, it, we're still only less than 10 minutes in, and and uh, it, it's going to be a long evening of of having to just kind of clear those balls with, with OG just continuously to, to attack. So, so again, at one point, you got to realize, you know, at this, we're at tournaments, so somewhere you got to try and find a chance to get some offense or, or you can never even re respond to the one goal, let alone more. Long shot goes through the uprights. Wrecker looking for her second, but nothing doing there. And a quick goal kick taken by the Falcons. Moving the ball into their midfield, but not able to keep possession. Aldrich takes it away for the Titans, sends it outside to Bree Douglas. Douglas looking for space, gets around one defender. Still has one more to beat, and she does. Into the box, look at Douglas go. Here's the shot back post, and it's just wide. And the referee says no touch from the goalkeeper, but Douglas, my goodness, we said it. 21 goals, 12 assists, and she looks the part. Yeah, and I, you know, she was looking for that Car uh, Carson uh, Erford on the backside, you know, to, to be there for that little touch, and. and I'm not sure, I think Carson might have thought she was just going for the shot. Again, the Titans suffocating Riverdale every time they touch the ball as Hazelman goes around a defender. Hazelman crosses into the box, knocked away. And it looks like, oh, okay, so it went out of play before the cross. And it'll be a goal kick as Riverdale sends in Atlee Vent. Well, and that's deceiving being on a football field and, and, and even from, you know, the, our viewers maybe, that, that white's actually out along that end line. So that black line that is at the edge of the red is actually where it's out of bounds. So if you're looking for the white, it's already out. That's a good call. And oftentimes you see when, when teams play on football fields, some players do get a little confused mm -hmm. on the sidelines. Now the Titans will make a few substitutions. Maggie Verhoff checks in, so does Maya Herringhouse. Hey, you're right. Like, like we've said, so many of these schools play so little. I, I know the one or two games we'd have a year, it was always reminding my girls of 
where the lines are and there would still be mistakes during the game. Throw in violation against the Titans, but they take it right back. Here's Micah Aldrich. Aldrich, good footwork, but her pass cut out. And handball down near the, well, the 15 yard line if you're looking at it football wise, but Carly Brinkman, uh, excuse me, Carson Erford getting a hand on that one. Well, and just looking at these, you know, teams benches, you're you're allowed to dress 22, and, and Riverdale just being even a smaller school than Ottawa. Ottawa usually has 40 or so girls mm -hmm. playing soccer, and and if I'm counting right, Riverdale only even has six, maybe seven subs total. So so they don't even have that full 22 lineup, which usually doesn't come into play. Most teams play 15, 16, but it just kind of shows that discrepancy and. And, and that and that maybe that some of the talent levels between these two squads. Riverdale coached by Scott Bash, one of the nicest guys coaching soccer in the area. I'll tell you what, Scott Bash, a tremendous person, tremendous coach. And on the other side, it's another great coach and great person, Michelle Mag, leading the Titans. Um, and Mag played herself, and she she's experienced for Ottawa, and she's experienced some of the you know they've had some quality coaches over the years, and uh, and, and she kind of knows that winning mentality. As has Riverdale. Riverdale's really been a pretty solid program the past 10, 15 years, and mm -hmm. and so it's it's not as if either of these programs are new to winning. Titans again, just reading the pass of Riverdale, taking it away as Aldrich sends it from left to right. Nice diagonal ball, just cut out by Riverdale's defense. It's or Allison Woodruff down there playing left back for Riverdale. There's Aldrich again commanding the midfield, takes that pass away. Well, you just notice every single every single ball that Riverdale plays out, yeah. The, the OG are closing down on those lanes, and it's, it really looks almost like passes from Riverdale to OG in some of them. Aldrich, quick pass down the right side, but that goes out for a Riverdale throw, and the Falcons will sub Built off back in. And Lily Farrow checking back in as well. Two starters coming back in after a break as we're 14 minutes into this game. Still 1-0 on the structure scoreboard. Goal scored by Mackenzie Recker to 36-37 mark. And here are the Titans again in the box. Beach has it taken away, but it's still with the Titans. And here's a cross over everyone's head. Yeah, just a little too much on that one. And but again, even on Riverdale's throw-ins, the, the OG's coming up with the ball, so... The Falcons trying to put some possession together. Titans again swarming. And there's Aldrich to take it away. Aldrich basically a defensive back tonight with about six interceptions. Well, they, they're just so disciplined on playing their positions and staying where they're supposed to to where, you know, that's some sometimes things that some of these uh, teams struggle with are just staying where you need to be. And, and if you can do that, especially in girls soccer at this point in the season, it's it kind of gives you the advantage over the other squads. Bree Douglas back into the game as we have our first corner of the evening. And Douglas will actually take this one as she checks in for Carson Erford. Douglas backs up to the track, takes it. Nice high kick right to the center of the box. It's knocked down and uh, We'll call it a pass as it's sent back to Douglas. Douglas, one touch to the middle of the box, a shot, and just over the bar. Well, and that one, about three OG girls could have taken that hit. That kind of just set right in the middle, and, and Riverdale's def defensive set are just playing a little back and giving Ottawa these early opportunities. It was Hazelman that took the shot, and Hazelman that intercepted that one, and that shot too low and grabbed with no problem by Sierra. Angelina Sierra, the goalkeeper tonight for Riverdale, just a junior. And foul just beyond midfield, so a free kick coming up for the Titans with 23.50 to go in the first half. It'll be 
taken by Carly Brinkman. Brinkman to the left of the goal. Sierra comes out, grabs it. She's hit. No whistle from the referee as the ball goes out. And uh -huh. it's a corner. I'm surprised. Okay. I thought maybe they were going to call her with possession, uh, OG hitting her and giving them the goal kick. Has he yeah, changed the call? I think he has, yeah. Well, now he's actually calling a foul, it looks like, because it's not even on the six. So the right call, I think. She yeah. did. She was. That was a, not in any way malicious, but uh, uh, extra contact with the goalie after she had possession. I think we would have heard some Riverdale fans complaining a little more if that uh, that corner was given. Ball out. Riverdale trying to get something going. Kennedy Phelps checking in. Maya Frey throws it in. Erford back in for the Titans. Again, Titans right in the grill of the Falcons as they're trying to get possession, but it's taken away by Mackenzie Recker. Titans watch this go out. They'll get a throw. Well, and you mentioned uh, OG has some younger girls playing as well. But uh, just seeing, just looking out there, you can tell, tell Riverdale's definitely young too. And, and like some of these girls are just kind of out, you know, out, outmatched physically. Yeah, uh, you know, so that that starts to play on you too, especially when you only have six or seven uh, subs total on your on your bench. You know, so and, and a lot of these girls on the OG side are definitely year-round athletes playing multiple sports and. And uh, they just have that kind of that momentum going over in Ottawa. It's like we always in every sport. There's there's an always a good Ottawa team, whether it's boys or girls. Just a very athletic few communities, right? There's <laughs> right, about three right. different communities that feed into the Ottawa Glendor school system. Is this one sent in by Douglas? Top of the box. Erford tried the one timer, but. Doesn't get enough on it. Now Riverdale has it taken away. Titans still in possession. Another one sent in the box. Falcons able to clear. Well, and that's what we talked though. Now she's in a one v versus four situation. So even even when they can get it up to their their forward, it, it's just going to be extremely tough to really make anything happen. Again, the Titans. Very content with the ball at their feet, right? You don't see this often, especially at the D3 level, teams that are just possession-based, that have slow buildup, that work the ball around a lot of times. And Brady, you and I talk about this often. We see teams that get the ball into midfield and try to just kick it as far as they can up over the defense and try to send a fast player on the end of it. And a lot of times you get deeper in the playoffs and that doesn't work. And it's because of teams like this that know how to defend, but also know how to string together possession. Right, you know, I only got a cover in COG once this year, but but uh, that is, that they do, they possess so well, and not only do they possess, they're doing that on this on turf, you know, so the foot skill is just there, and, and they're moving the ball around on defense, they're moving the ball, they're making, they're running through lanes, they're making uh, give and goes, all the way into the 18. They're not forcing any type of deep shot. So yeah, that that is that difference as we get further along in the tournament of these these top tier teams. And the Titans take it away again. Here's Douglas. Douglas, more fancy footwork, almost able to keep it in, but the cross goes wide and out for a goal kick. With that, we'll step aside. 19 and a half to go here in the first half. You're watching high school soccer on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight is presented by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. one nothing on that Structure Outdoor Ohio scoreboard. Evan Skilleter and Brady Alt, or excuse me, Brady Overholt with you today. Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts, Brady Overholt. Don't really know. For some reason it all sounds the same to me today. It works. The Titans with the one nothing lead, and really I don't know if that's reflective of how dominant they've been in this match. 
Riverdale really hasn't had the ball. I don't, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think they've had the ball in their final third yet. No, I, I don't either, and, and even even the midfield, again, OG's just swarming. And, and three of those defenders haven't really even had to do much. It's really been the, the one, one center back that, that's kind of got the ball possessed and played it right back to their mids and forwards. So, it, it, again, you know, we're – Anything can happen in tournament play, but but OG's dominated so far at 22 minutes into the game, and and, and I, I really don't know if Riverdale will be able to find an answer for that. Hazelman running through the defense, outside to Douglas. Douglas runs into a defender, a nice tackle there. And Riverdale actually wins the throw. Well, and, and you mentioned earlier some of these, you know, uh, Ottawa's playing some of these Division One schools, the Perrysburgs, the Anthony Waynes, who are, you know, top top ten schools in the entire state in D1, and they're beating and or tying those type of schools. So it just tells you where they are in, in the possession part you mentioned. is It's it's pretty impressive to watch so far this, ha this match. Good footwork by a defender, Carly Brinkman. Ball taken away, though. Brinkman steps up for the tackle, but Harley Gonzalez keeps possession. Now taken away. Good work up top by Clara Beach. And Beach, a little too nifty as Look. she runs right into the defender. Yeah, I think there was four of her own defenders back there ready for a pass and almost worked around, but Riverdale stepped in there. Hazelman tries to step up, but the pass gets through. Lily Farrow, Farrow drops it back. Kennedy Phelps and taken away once again. Hazelman's pass intercepted. Ball moved forward, Harley Gonzalez trying to get something going but again knocked away by the Titans. Hazelman controls as she gives it back to Douglas. Well and, and ideally I think Riverdale's trying to get that ball uh, up to a target player and, and, and the, the idea is for her to hold and let her girls lap into it, run, in, run through, make those runs. But OG just is swarming so fast, there's no chance for that girl that's up there to, to be able to hold at all. And you're just seeing it go right back to Ottawa's midfield. Titans put Mackenzie Recker back into the game. Marissa Brown will check out. You mentioned how many players they usually have in their program. And that's evidenced by how often they're substituting players, keeping those legs fresh. Uh, yeah, you hit on it. It's still kind of that small community where everyone's playing. And, and you know, we ha haven't even mentioned, you know, we're, we're talking fall sports, and their volleyball program is just as solid. Mm -hmm. And uh, for, for a school that size to have so much talent, it's telling you pretty much every girl is playing. And, and the bo boys' side is, is very similar. Couple great cross country runners as well. Right, right. You're right. You, you are right. Yep. Yeah. So, so you're talking every every fall sport. I think a few years back, OG girls in uh, volleyball and girls soccer were both in the state tournament, and that that's a very impressive feat. Hazelman takes it away once again. Hazelman looking for space, sends it up the left side, but it's cut out by Riverdale. Raya Bonham sends it forward for Eden Barnes. Barnes, nice pass ahead for Harley Gonzalez. Aldrich tries to step back and take it away, but Riverdale keeps possession with Biltoft. And Biltoft's pass taken away as it's sent all the way down to the back line of the Falcons. Well, what's impressive is the, the girls defending for OG are actually their midfielders. It's it's their midfield that's making this stop around the 40 or 50 yard line and really it's not even getting back to that back four line. Aldrich with nice footwork but how about the save? Angelina Sierra with the dive down to her right side holds onto the ball and keeps this score at one nothing. Yeah great save by her to keep them in here but, you know you, they, they've really held off besides that first four minutes in, and, and if they can get to the to halftime again, only down one, anything can happen. So 
although OG's controlled most of this, they're they're hanging in and not you're, they're bending, not breaking. So Hazelman sends one in with her left foot, but Sierra there to gobble it up, and she's going to go quickly as Riverdale try to counter. But again, the Titans right there to take it away. It's with Aldrich, 13 and a half to play first half. Yeah, I like her idea there. Try, try to get something maybe going quick. Uh, just like their this ability for OG to be where exactly where they need to every time is pretty astonishing, really. Aldrich with a diagonal to the right side, but no one there. Yeah, as I say that, then we, they do have a ball played up with no one in that spot. But Maya Herringhouse checking in for the Titans. Maya Frey and Brooke Durenberger checking in for the Falcons. It's a Riverdale throw on the far side. Still one nothing on the structure outdoor Ohio by Alts scoreboard. Ball sent back out by the Titans. That was Mackenzie Recker. Now the Falcons trying to move it forward, but Aldrich there once again. Aldrich with the spin. Now up the right side. Wrecker giving chase, but it's cut out by the defense. Tough to see those Riverdale numbers on the far side. Titans, chance to cross, and that one went over the line for another goal kick. Yeah, I think a few times I think that 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 out of bounds line is kind of causing a few issues. They're taking that one extra touch and, and, and then realizing at the last second that White's already out, so. That adjustment has cost maybe a couple crosses on the OG end. Uh, Riverdale maybe a chance developing. Roadhouse, she tries the cross but scuffs it wide and it's out for a goal kick. And really, it's not meant to be a joke, but that's the most exciting offensive play we've had from Riverdale so far. Is it's kind of what they need is right. the Titans just to make one wrong step and if they can get by him and make something happen it's a whole new ball game well and i think you, you kind of saw her you know ideally maybe a few more touches towards the goal and, and get inside that that uh, box for a shot but yeah getting down there for the first time it was ju just to force og to take a goal kick is a positive and we see the ball stay down here which gives them another opportunity Foul goes against Riverdale, so a free kick for the Titans. Riverdale fans wanted a handball, but I think the, the arm was in that natural position, which it's one of the toughest things, I think, for a fan to grasp is even if it hits the hand, if that arm is in a normal running position or standing to the side position, you're normally not going to get the right. call. Right, right, and, and then to get the no call is okay, but then you kind of saw the, the Riverdale uh, forward put a little extra force into that push and that, then that makes it kind of an easy call going the other way. Nice touch pass as it goes to Wrecker. Wrecker has it taken away. Titans trying to take it back and they do as Erford has it on the far side. Back to Wrecker. Still with the Titans. Fight for possession, and it's just sent out of bounds by Riverdale for a tight throw as they take it quickly. And another one that goes out. The Titans will throw it in. This is Beach. Beach into Aldrich in the box. Aldrich drops it back. Wrecker. Wrecker has it taken away, but Erford sends it back to the right side. Here's another cross. Hazelman, left-footed shot off the bar. Back into play, still some danger. Riverdale finally able to keep it out. Yeah, great shot on the left foot. And then, and it looks as if, and and this is, I, I can see what, what Riverdale's doing here, and it somewhat makes sense. They kind of, they really are packing the box to try to get through this half with really only one, two girls not inside that box defending. Um, it's not ideal, but in this situation, if, uh, you know, I think coach is thinking if we can get to halftime still only down one, it, it gives us a chance to make something happen. And, you know, this could be one of those. They're looking at maybe this could be one of those 17, 18 shot game for OG, only a couple for Riverdale. And if they can make one of those work, it's, it's a ball game. Absolutely. Chloe Powell checking in 
for the Falcons. She'll play right back. She replaces Allison Woodruff. Aldrich takes it away. Hazelman, one touch, gets past the defender. Now out wide for Maya Herringhouse. Riverdale trying to counter. Herringhouse sends it out. Maya Frey took a touch. Ball rolls out. Last touch by Riverdale. Bree Douglas checking back in, or wants to check back in. Here she comes. <laughs> And Megan Horstman will take the throw as she sends it up the left side, but it's cut out by Lily Farrow. Now Wrecker. Oh, good Wrecker give and gets go. it back. Wrecker getting around a defender, crosses into the box. The clearance goes off of Falcon, eventually cleared away by Madison Breidenbaugh. Yeah, well, the, that back corner defender kind of saved a corner kick by ac accidentally deflecting off of her, so... Here's Aldrich with a shot back post. It's wide. So again, Riverdale will be able to escape. And yeah, we've seen, you know, if you did have to nitpick a couple things on the OG side. They, they've had quite a few opportunities from this left side and, and given those crosses back in, and there just doesn't seem to be someone right where they need to at that time. That's the one thing that if they could fix that, they, they'd probably have two or three more. Douglas was in an offside position. Riverdale with a free kick. Seven minutes and some change to play first half. Still just one nothing on the structure scoreboard. Happy you could join us tonight for a beautiful evening. High school soccer regional semifinals. Winner will move on to play in Tiffin on Saturday. Opponent to be determined. Yeah, and really looking into even all of next week. The weather looks great, so if you can get down to Columbus for the state tournament and still have weather in the 60s, I think anyone would take that in mid-November. So oh, absolutely. Hawkins moving it forward. Ball trickles over to Harley Gonzalez, but it gets away from her as Hazelman sends it up the left side and out for a throw. You've said it a couple times, but Riverdale really packing some numbers back. and It almost trickles into their attitude offensively. Once they get the ball in the midfield, you've seen a couple players just kind of turn and kick it away. Right. And you wonder if that's going to play a part when they do really need to score a goal. It's kind of tough to flip that switch, but right now they have some work to do defensively as Douglas moves it down the left side. Douglas with the cross and over top. Yeah, and you're exactly right. That that. It's, it's understandable if you, you don't want to give up a goal, but but you have to somehow score a goal. So so for that to work at, at some point, I'm thinking Coach probably wants to adjust a few things at halftime and get them to halftime 1-0 and if they can and, and happy with that. Um, but then, yes, that discussion has to come on. How, how do we, though, break through this back four that really haven't, haven't been uh, pressured at all? Maybe a chance to move it forward, but it goes right under the legs of Brooke Durenberger. It's possession back from the Titans. Hazelman up to Douglas. Douglas over to Hazelman, but again, that turf. The ball just rolling a little more quickly than he anticipated. And, you know, part of that, I've, I've been on both sides of these pack in the box type games on the side that was kind of controlling and also the side that was just trying to not give up a goal. And, and it gets frustrating for OG as well. They keep plugging away and can't get a goal. You know, They're not used to that. So that is something that does get a bit frustrating. And it's getting a little animated here as Titans draw a foul. Clara Beach goes down. Yeah, it's almost almost like a 7-2 a, a <laughs> maybe lineup uh, if I'm looking at at the white defenders back there. Well, yeah, There's, there are seven, seven eight, across that maybe. back line. Yeah, so. Yeah. Free kick from 40 
37 yards out. Carly Brinkman lines it up. Brinkman, right side, edge of the box, brought down by the Titans, cleared away by the Falcons. Yeah, after that first four minutes, uh, the game itself hasn't changed much. They just haven't given up anymore. So, so if you can get to, to halftime 1-0, I, I think the way it started, I don't think any of us would have would have seen that, Agreed. to be honest. So I guess how, whatever means necessary to, to get to that point and then maybe just at halftime. Titans trying to get something going before the end of the half. And staying strong, though. Moving up the left side, that pass to no man's land. Taken away by Hazelman. Hazelman, nice cut back. Drops it off. Trying to switch fields are the Titans, but it's cleared away by the Falcons. Cut out, Fairhoff, and her pass goes out for a throw. And this is where River, yeah, Riverdale's really got to be careful because you've kind of packed this box and it's since to get to the halftime just 1-0. Uh, but the worst thing can be that second goal, even though it's only two, the worst thing with a team like OG is to do that and, and with only a couple minutes left, happen to give one up. So if they can hold tight here, it, it really is good for them going into the halftime. Trying to get something, but a really nice defensive play this time by Carly Brinkman as she knocks it forward. And the Titans try to counter. Good physical play to take it back, though. Just under two minutes to go now, first half. Hazelman over to Douglas. Douglas right back to Hazelman. And there's that possession you were talking about earlier. A little bit too far there, but... Again, they're just kind of splitting and, and, and making those Riverdale players just work even extra hard on running and, and trying to close those gaps. Falcons can't keep control in play, so it'll be a tight throw. Douglas will check out as she's replaced by Savannah Record. for someone to throw to. Now in for Aldrich. Excuse me, the pass was intended for Carson Erford, but ended up with Aldrich. The announcer says one minute remaining in the half. Still 1-0, Hazelman takes it away. Hazelman, tough as nails. Here come the Falcons, they're gonna try a deep shot. And hey, it's a right, shot on goal. Right, right. Grabbed by Emma Brinkman, the goalkeeper. Yeah, with time, time running out and, and the all four defenders still back, she, she's kind of looking at it as, well, do I run into these four defenders or just take that early shot? May, uh, and a little more on it, it could have given, given a little bit of a challenge for the goalkeeper. Thirteen seconds now. Probably not enough time for the Titans to do anything as they send it up the left side. All cleared, and we have halftime. 1-0 the score here at Wildpock. The Titans on top of the Riverdale Falcons as we head to break in the second half coming up after this on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight is presented by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Welcome back to Wapakoneta High School. Evan Skilleter and Brady Overholt with you tonight as we're about ready for the start of the second half as the Ottawa Glendorf Titans lead 1-0 over the Riverdale Falcons in this regional semifinal. Titans, a team that scored just three minutes, basically three and a half minutes into this game, and we haven't seen a score since. It's been all Titans, though, 
for the most part. One shot on goal, it came from about 40 yards out for Riverdale, but still a shot on goal as they kind of started to get something going at the end of the half. Yeah, a couple, you know, a couple different uh, opportunities, maybe to at least get something, as you mentioned, in, in towards their offensive third. Um, the, the thing is, we talked a little bit the first half, you're still down, so ultimately you still have to score. I'm guessing Coach from Riverdale discussed that at halftime. But you can't let Walpock, or Walpock, you can't let OG do what they about to do right there and work that ball across and get a goal. They missed a couple of opportunities first half and missed one again. Goalkeeper a little slow to get up. Angelina Sierra, who had a couple of nice plays in the first half, including a really nice save on a dive to her left. Looks like she'll be okay. Stop rolling out for a goal kick. Barnes on the goal kick. Titans this season, 17 wins, one loss, two draws. That loss was to Division I Perrysburg. Riverdale, 12-5 and two this season. Lufton, two to one in overtime. The last time out to win their district and to get to this regional tournament. Titans knock off Kenton six to nothing to get to this spot. Goal kick coming up. Falcons take this one quickly. Riverdale really kind of parked the bus in that first half, sent most of their defenders back. Now they're playing with two a little bit further up the field when their team's on defense. We'll see if they adjust it all down one. Yeah, they, they tried to kind of move the ball to the other side real quick and catch OG off guard, but I don't think they were really falling for that, so. Yeah, clears, tight throw from the far side. Hazelman throws it in down the left. Douglas around a defender. Douglas with the cross. Erford with the shot and another nice save. Another chance, that one blocked. Another chance, and that one is going to be three points. I'll tell you, that second attempt that, that did get blocked, that was a good hit. Uh, it stayed low. It, I, if, if there wasn't someone in the way, that was going in. So good, uh, good work by Riverdale to not give it up still, and hopefully you know, they can keep this an interesting second half for us and, and get something going on their end. Sierra has been fantastic in goal for Riverdale. Titans draw a foul just beyond midfield. Free kick coming up for last year's Division Three state runner-up. Falling in Columbus in their last game of the year. Aldrich tries to turn, able to get it back. Kenzie Recker, the goal scorer. Anyway, throw for the Titans. Throw in. Into the box. It's clear of Beach. This one just right into the paws of Angelina Sierra. That actually, that miss, miss kind of kick by Riverdale actually worked out for him to get it to their keeper. Trying to get it past midfield here. Douglas on the far side sends it up to Beach. Beach trying to get around a defender but loses her footing. Ultimately sent out by the Falcons for a throw as Hazelman gets ready to send it in. Well, Riverdale looks to still be playing most of their girls back. If, if you look on each side, they're almost playing a 3v2. Three, three defenders on the left side when OG's making runs down and three defenders on the right side. So so they're really paying attention to those outside runners on OG. And again, that, that's maybe slowing that play down, but, but at some point you're going to have to get stuff going as we work through the second half. I think another note that's interesting about this Titan loss here. Last year, a youthful team, brought back a lot for the year. This year, still only four seniors on the roster. Right, which is, you know, I, I know, two years ago when they started to really, really get get better and pick it up, that it, it was all a talk about a, a bunch of. Oh. Hazelman with the left-footed shot. 
to the left of the goalkeeper, perfectly placed. And our second goal of this game comes at the 24-53 mark as Lily Hazelman knocks it in for her seventh goal of the year. Sorry to cut you off there, Brady. Yeah. What a great goal from Hazelman, and we will go to break very briefly. We'll be right back with more after this on WOSN. Scoreboard tonight is presented by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alt. At Structure Outdoor Ohio, bring your indoors out. Welcome back to Wapak High School, where that score is 2 0 in favor of the Titans after a great shot from Lily Hazelman. That's the Titans up 2 0. And Brady, I'm sorry we cut you off there right before that goal. Oh, no, no. She, I mean, that she really made that a little too easy. That, right around the outside of 18 and sent it in, but. But yeah, well, you were mentioning with how how young they are. They're about year three in a row with probably half their team being the same starters, at, at least you know from year to year. So, so you want to say you know uh, this these groups of solid soccer players eventually run through, but they're they're, they're not losing much against some solid seniors, but only four total. And as you can see from the bench, with about 15 girls on the side, they, they're probably going to continue to reload. Falcons getting it a little deeper into that final third. It's taken away by the Titans, but it will be interesting to see how Riverdale responds. They did a nice job fending off the Titans after an early goal in the first half. Now down two. They need to get something going. It'll be interesting here, but Titans trying to make it three. Wilford working up the right side, still in possession. sliding over for Riverdale. Well, she was planning on working that ball around her there and beating her on the outside, but good, good defense by Riverdale to slow down the attack. And let a sub switch out here for both sides. And Here's where they definitely have to be careful. We talked at halftime. If you let OG keep going, they, they won't stop and they can really rack up a few more and, and put this game out of reach so as far as Riverdale goes you know they're still in that spot to where they can make something happen possibly but uh, but another one or two and it's going to make it real tough with this solid OG defense set to the right side knocked down by Hazelman Douglas spins around sends it to Hazelman crosses top of the box a little behind the target now it's Erford Erford closed off and it's knocked away by Woodruff. It's content just to drop it back and then we start right side. Erford, I suppose. Allison Woodruff. Right, pardon me, I think that was Mariah Bottom. That was indeed who knocked that out for Riverdale and now throw for the Falcons. Trying to counter. They go up the left side, but it goes right past the target. It's Harley Gonzalez. Gonzalez gets in the way of that clearance, though. They want to get rid of it. Rupert drops it back for Aldrich. Well, that possession you mentioned first half is just what, what's, you don't realize how much it does for them, for OG. Because they're, they're not panicking at all. They're moving the ball around it. In their situation, their their worst case is they get a throw in instead of move the ball down directly, and, and they just they don't really you don't see any type of panic at all as they play and, and continue to make these runs and get the goals. Nice try by Mackenzie Recker to get around the defender. She got the ball passed and maybe had a step, but the turf monster came up and got a foot. Back in possession though, the Titans beach. Over to Erford. Erford down the right side. She picks out Wrecker, but. Just a little quick still. You can still see OG's getting get a little more used to this turf, but it still just moves at such a quicker pace than they're used to. And an injured player for the Falcons down. With that, we will step aside with 30 46 on the clock. You're watching High School Soccer on WOSN.
Our scoreboard tonight is presented by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. There, Kennedy Phelps able to get up and run off the field. Good news for the Falcons. We'll see if she can get back into this one as we're back underway here in Wampak. It's going to turn radio with Ricky Jacob O'Neill above us on the camera. And we talk of how quick this turf is, but it, it really could be worse. With, with one, we don't have any rain or weather, and we were st we started early enough before, early enough that we don't have that dew on on the turf either, because it really will even get uh, quicker. As usually by this part of the season, it's already cold and, and getting a little slicker at night. So hopefully, it works out for these girls with only 30 minutes left that uh, we don't see that until they're already finished. Gets possession for the Titans in midfield. Sends it out wide to Hazelman. Hazelman is cut back inside. Now Douglas around one defender. The second one gets there and knocks out for a point. Now a touch for a corner kick. Douglas will set it down. As the majority of her team goes back post. Yeah, they're now at about Nine in the box, it looks like. So goes back post, not a down. Hazelman got possession and then set it up and out for a goal kick. Danger averted for Riverdale, hanging on here down just two. It's the team that averages 5.1 goals per game. Incredible number when you think about it. We've scored 102 goals this season, make it 104 after this two years. Well, you're exactly right, and especially with, you mentioned earlier, the competition they're playing. They're, they're playing uh, Anthony Wayne, who's, who's still playing in Division One. They're playing uh, teams like St. Mary's, who's still playing in Division Two. So so it's not, the, the teams they're playing are, I don't want to call slap, you know, the word maybe underrated teams or, or stat building teams. They're solid programs that they're scoring four, five, six, seven goals on. So it, it, it really is, it's a testament to where they're at, just not just in D3, but throughout all three divisions. Play continues, Riverdale with it on the far side. Players go tumble, he says nothing. Play continues, he play on. Get a little bit physical out there as the is on. Well, some of these fans, might be used to uh, what we maybe call more of our local refs and not as much experience to where to where we get at, at this level in regionals. These are assigned through the state, and, and, and these guys have experience at some of that Division One, Division Two level to where some of that little stuff, they're going to allow you to play on. So that's, that's what you know, some of these girls have to get used to as they work farther in the tournament, and maybe some of the fans too from what we're hearing. Four-man crew tonight. Four Two line judges. We have the center man, mm -hmm. the fourth official, who hasn't seemed to be doing a whole lot. Well, I think uh, that, that's the only only kind of local guy. But I I think there there's been a few times where uh, uh, AR or even the center refs gotten hurt. So it's in that situation, what do you do? So once you get to regionals, they have that fourth as just a backup option and kind of. Just seeing everything from the sideline point of view, so. Riverdale starting to push forward, but nice job by Hazelman coming up and cutting that off for the Titans. Horseman sends this across the line for a Riverdale throw. All things considered, Riverdale only being down 2 nothing is Probably best case scenario for how this game has gone. Titans controlling possession. Plenty of shots on goal. The goalkeeper for Riverdale, Angelina Sierra, has done a tremendous job tonight. And really, the entire Riverdale defense, yes, they've given up two goals, but they've played really well, thwarting a lot of attacks and just keeping this high-powered offense at bay. Right. They're, they're not, yeah, and the, the second goal was even kind of deeper. That was almost more of a midfield goal. So... 
So, so you're right. They, they are keeping this during season. If I'm coaching, maybe, uh, hey, solid, solid work, girls. We played hard. You know, there's things we can work on. Unfortunately for them, we're at the postseason where we can't build off of that. Um, so, so you still want to try to make something happen. But. We talked about the four seniors from the Titans that will be graduating after this season. Only three seniors for Riverdale. Be going this well, there's another cross. There's been about, I, I want to say a good almost 10 of those so far you know, that if, if they just had that that girl just a little better spot there they'd, they'd have four or five more but yeah Riverdale she, we were reading an article earlier and, and from starting 5-5-2 five, five and two to making seven straight wins and, and winning their, their district it's definitely uh, nothing to you know hang your head on uh, and if you had to pick any regional Final throughout the whole or regional semi throughout the whole state. It might be one I, I would not want to see with G. So they sure. kind of ran yeah. into an uh, uh, unfortunate uh, regional semi final match. Seven straight wins to get to this point. Two tough victories, one over Van Buren, two to one, and then overtime thriller against Bluffton at Bluffton. Now. Well, and as you mentioned, I think we talked about Riverdale's coach a little bit, but when they were five, five, and two, I, I think if you're saying, "Hey, we're going to win out, we're going to we're going to get to regionals," I, I think he would be pretty pretty happy with that. Obviously, you, you don't want to end at that point, but but every once in a while, you just have that tough team that you happen to run into and right now in our area it, it really is Ottawa Landorf. Get our area. It's in the state. You're state. Right. You, you are right. Dale clears this out of the box only as far as Maggie Verhoff. Verhoff has it taken away. Now maybe a chance to counter. And a heavy touch by Harley Gonzalez. And the Titans get it right back. Claire Beach, Beach nice and patient, but then crosses right into the legs of a Riverdale defender. Far left with Carson Erford. Erford up to Douglas. Douglas has it knocked away. Oh well, yeah, these these outside defenders for Riverdale, they they have to be tired because OG continues his work both right and left side, and and, and they they're. Mentioned earlier, they're bending a bit, but they're not. They really aren't breaking, you know. And that's definitely an attest, a testament to their coach and, and that improvement we've seen over these last seven games from them. Cleared to midfield. Made by Madeline Hogus. Hogus on the right side of Mackenzie Recker. Possession as Beach turns. Beach still sticking with it. Beach still there. It was actually knocked off of Mackenzie Wrecker. Now cleared away by Riverdale. Gonzalez. Touch pass. Over to Biltoft. Biltoft back to Gonzalez who spins. Like you said, now with Riverdale having so many numbers backward. Yeah, it just makes it tough for him. And they're only really playing about 15 girls as we watch the sub on. So these defenders have really been worked. The midfielders are having to play defense and offense. So, so they're they're just running a lot of field, and and, and it's just a bit too much for them when you look at one OG's talent and two the much larger bench with with that sub rotation a little more consistent. Here's a shot that gets tipped and goes out there. Fifteen to play on the structure outdoor scoreboard. Still two zero. Titans on top. Hanging in there. Number five. Number five. Number five. Number five. Right off the beach and off the post. Right.
right off the near post, and, and that's the second one. Yeah. Yeah. Just a junior. Yeah, she she's really, you don't want to say kept them in this, but in a sense, there's probably two, three more that OG could have with, with her not being exactly where you need to. Um, it was the second, that first one was right off the post, and they had one early on in the first half off the post as well that didn't, didn't go in, so... If they can make something happen and maybe maybe get this within one score, then then we got a good 20 minutes. But a lot of times the only two goals against you isn't too much. But but with a team like OG, that as we get closer to that 10 minute mark, it gets harder and harder and harder. Hazelman checks in. Rutherford will take a seat here with under 20 to play. Yeah. Starting to move up just a bit. Cracking into that final third, but here are the Titans taking it away. Beach, touch pass over to Wrecker. Wrecker has it taken away, but Titans back on possession with Bearhoff. Bearhoff up the right side. And Just a little too quick. Yep. Riverdale's been actually trying to sub quite a bit here too. Maybe get some fresh legs in there to work on getting that attack going a little more. Realizing that down to 20 minutes now, you got to make something happen. Possession, but only briefly as Hazelman steps up, takes it away once again. Hazelman, a player that so far this season with a goal today, has seven goals, leads the team with 15 assists. But She's one of those players that just keeps going. One of those players that is a coach's dream, someone that works hard, doesn't stop, can take hits, physical, knows where to be, sticks her nose in. Just one of those players that you just really love to have. Yeah, great possession from her, and, and you can tell she's kind of their, not quarterback, but in a sense, yeah, that girl with with, with 15 uh, assists, that's what really stuck out to me. Leads, like, like you said, leads a team. And, she just knows where to be and knows where to give the ball. So a lot of those goals that we're seeing from Bree Douglas and McKenna Seifker, you're thinking uh, a girl like uh, Hazelman, who, who just always seems to be where she needs to be and get the ball up to, to the scoring threats up front. That's why I don't. You know, we've been talking about this goalkeeper, and, and she's done a great job. And that's—I don't think she was expecting that. They haven't really taken many deep shots, and, and you do notice though she's the first one to get her team together. And you can tell as only being a junior, she's a leader on that team already. And, and she brought them all together and like, hey, let's stay in this here, you know, and uh, keep keep playing. We got a lot of soccer left. So sorry for any audio issues. I think my. Mike may have been turned off during that goal, but I was excited. Good shot right there from Wrecker, her second of the night. Riverdale in a deep hole now, really having to get something going against the team that has possessed the ball so well in this game. There's built off. Ball into the box, and look at that second time that the goalkeeper, Emma Brinkman, has touched the ball tonight. First one was a save on a shot from about, I don't know, 30 yards out or so. This one she just picks up 
a pass that got away from the Falcons. Now Riverdale pushing numbers forward. Down the right side they go. Well, we've talked about record with a couple goals, and, and as far as as far as far uh, OG goes, she's the fifth leading scorer on her right. team. But but tonight she's there, and obviously she does a lot more than that. Where, you know, as far as WBL goes, there's 11 girls that are first team, and, and the WBL is very good. Well, four of those girls were OG girls. So when, when as good as the WBL is in girls soccer, when, when four of those 11 are from OG, including Wrecker as one of them, you know that that's a solid program, and, and she's done a lot more than just score goals, but tonight she's she's really been on. I think it was Seifker, Aldrich, Douglas, and Wrecker were all first-team league this year, and they had a, a couple of second, third, I, I want to say maybe 10, 10 total, <laughs> which <laughs> was about their entire starting squad, which, right. which after watching them, rightfully so. Erford. Moving down the left side. Stops and has a defender close her off, but Hazelman comes over for it and she dribbles out of bounds. A Titan, or excuse me, a Riverdale Falcon throw. Titans so far outscoring opponents in three playoff matches, 15 to nothing, including these three goals today. Maybe another chance for a shot. Mackenzie Recker at the top, sends it into the box. Taken away by Riverdale, sent all the way up the field. Well, she was forced to play with her left there, and I don't think she wanted to take the shot, so maybe almost like a cross there, but no, no one up front for OG, so. Falcon throw, working it down the right. Aldrich takes it away. I think we heard some OG fans want to call for that ball playing on the ground, but I think up 3-0 and controlling the way we have, I don't, I don't see the ref making that call. You'll, you'll be okay. <laughs> and the Riverdale player, player goes tumbling to the turf and a foul called by the referee. And again, some more groans from the Ottawa Glandorf side. Well, that, maybe they're not understanding kind of how refs might not say it, but yes, when, when you start to see one team kind of controlling a bit, the one side might get some calls more so than the other, and that's just something that is kind of expected in a sense. So, as you said, I, I think up 3-0 and not much time left. I think they're in an okay position. Injured player gets up. She had her hands over her head. Sometimes you wonder if that's more of a wind knocked out of her situation. But either way, good to see her on her feet. I want to thank our scoreboard sponsor again tonight. It's sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alt. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Well, we've mentioned this turf a few times. It's, it hurts a little more than, than grass coming down. I was... Doesn't doesn't feel as great as uh, not that any of it does, but right. but sometimes it's a little more forgiving when you when in in that grass and on that on that dirt instead of a, a concrete that's underneath this at some point. As the player walks off the field, I want to remind you that TV44 and WOSN are nonprofit organizations supported by viewers like you. Now is a great time to make a donation in any size as a way to say thank you for this sports broadcast and many others every year on WOSN. You can go to WTLW.com and click Donate Here. Donations are accepted 24 hours a day. Just visit that website, WTLW.com. Miranda Miller, the injured player, works her way to the sideline. We're ready to get back underway with 13.45 on the clock. Restart taken away by the Titans, but sent right back to Riverdale and Eden Barnes. Oh, 
Aldrich in midfield. Aldrich down the right side through two defenders. Great ball. It's Olivia Groathaus, and again, fans call for handball, but that's one of those. Again, she's just running, right. and her, her arm is in a relatively natural position, and the referees will let that continue most of the time. Well, especially, yeah, you mentioned, and she was in control of that ball, too. So, yeah, I don't, I don't, I think that was a good no call. And actually, if they wanted it, it almost looked like Riverdale might have had the same situation at the end that wasn't called. So, I think the key is to me when coaching and or watching, it's that consistency. As long as that consistency is not too bad by the refs, if it's, if it's consistent, then that's what you're really looking for. And where we're at in the state tournament, you know, by the, in the regionals, I, I think we, should be getting pretty consistent with the refs from here on out. Bonham sends it down the left side off the head of Mackenzie Recker. In possession, Brooke Dern Berger, Berger excuse me. Ber Hazelman, excuse me, steps in for the interception, but sends it out for a throw. Down to 12 and change left in regulation here at Wapak High School. Great facility for regional semifinal action. Great weather as well, and two great teams on the pitch tonight. Titans dispatching Kaleida 6-0 and Kenton 6-0, and right now Riverdale holding them to just three goals. It's a team that averages 5.1 per game. I think that second game, they end up getting Miller City. I think Kenton dropped to or went to D Division Two. Well, I misread, no question about that. You know, I think they played Kenton in their last matchup. You know what? Season, it, it, we're looking here, yep. Kenton, they beat 6-0 in the last match of the season, and that submitted the WBL title for them. So then it was St. John's 10-0, Continental 4-0, Miller City 6-0. Excuse I, me. I, either way, a lot of goals for and <laughs> run right, against, right? right. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You take a look at their last five matchups. Six nothing, six nothing, ten nothing, four nothing, six nothing. That is a lot of goals to zero. Yeah, but you, you, you are right, though. The Kenton team does. Sometimes they border right on that. And, and there's a handful of schools. OG does, too. They border right on that Division two, Division three level. Bath has in the past, and Liberty Benton has, and they moved up to D Division two and for Ottawa, they're one of the biggest Division Three, and, and you know that works out in their favor. Uh, Riverdale's one of the you know not not smallest, but a smaller school, and a community like OG, where all all kids, most kids are participating, it really benefits their sports programs. Titans into the box, they cross it. Bree Douglas, leading goal scorer on this team, with the shot, and once again, Angelina Sierra. In the right spot, makes a great save. Yes, folks, she's given up three goals tonight, but she has been so good in goal for these Falcons. Yeah, right where she needed to be. You know, that was right on the PK line, easy open net, and, and the keeper just came up with a, a great save to stop another one. So that's two or three real good ones she's had tonight already. This ball sent down the right side. Douglas gives chase but pulls up. She knew that was about to head across the turf. Only played soccer in the field for a couple of years. I was a goalkeeper for most of my life, but in the days where I wasn't, one of the toughest things for me to do was to go from the regular season to winter indoor season and going from the grass to the turf. And then in the summer, we would often play futsal tournaments ONU would have some, Bluffton has a couple. And that's even harder because you're playing on the, the hardwood floor. Right. These different surfaces, different, de excuse me, the different surfaces definitely make it difficult to adjust at times. For the Titans, number four. Yeah, unfortunately, so yeah, you, you keep her sometimes. The, the credit's not given when due, and, and she's had a great game herself tonight and, 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 and kept this, uh, you know, we went through a lot of their uh, OG's games this year, and, and this is one of the lower ones, you know, as far as they're scoring five goals a game, and we're still just at 3-0. They've at least kept themselves within this game. 
Mackenzie Recker wrapped her foot around the ball and just sent it wide left. For Riverdale throw as we approach the eight minute mark in this one. Titans presuming they stay on top in this one will be just two wins away from returning to Lower.com Field in Columbus for another state final. So still work to do. This year, I'd certainly like to get over the hump and win that state final. Aldrich pulls it down. Aldrich has some room to shoot. Now sends it down over with a right foot. Another diving save. Another good save and, and way to get that ball out and then on the defensive side as well to keep the second shot from coming. And you mentioned OG wants to get over that hump. I know, you know, on the boys side, a couple other local teams in. Shawnee's one that can't seem to quite get over that hump either. And, and you know, they got a lot of seniors that are kind of finalizing their year. So I know their coach is wanting to find a way to do that as well as they, they're going to have a tough match with Lexington coming up. Every year we see Shawnee and Lexington. I feel like they scrimmage when they play a regular season game and then they eventually meet each other in the playoffs. I think we're, you're right, I think we're at least at three years in a row. So, and, and, and if I remember right, they're about 1-1 one, one right now on, on who gets to that regional final. Play that one at Lima Senior tomorrow night. Aldrich toward goal. Sierra comes out and grabs it. Sierra also has some really good hands. You know, sometimes goalkeepers are good at just being quick and knocking the ball away, but but Angelina Sierra has done a nice job grabbing the ball and reducing, even eliminating a lot of the rebounds, uh, rebound opportunities that you see in a lot of games. Yeah, she's, you, you're right. You can tell she's kind of one of those. I'm guessing if Coach could, he'd have her on the field too because you sure. can just tell she's athletic. And, and sometimes, uh, at, at least at, where we're at, you know, at, at the Division three level, there's it's not always that, like, girl that's just been a goalie her whole life. So you got to... You got to find that uh, that athlete that was willing to do it, and yeah, she's only being a junior. She's really looking. I, I can see a, a good senior year coming as well. St. Mary's girls have a great goalkeeper as well, and she's just as good on the field. But she gives them the best chance in, in the goal. So yeah, she started as a freshman and outside back, the St. Mary's goalkeeper, and then has played goalkeeper the last two years. And probably would be an all-league player on the field, right. possibly. So yeah, so we, you know, they they had a good battle during the season. OG and and St. Mary's at St. Mary or OG definitely was controlled that game. But that was another team that did pretty well this year and, and had quite a few girls on the on the uh, all WBL first team. Titans. Have that one taken away. Good position there from Madison Breidenbaugh. Right side, Douglas takes a heavy touch, taken away. Little possession here by turnover now, but a little bit of possession moving the ball around by, by Riverdale. And kind of winding down here and you See, we're not quite seeing that intensity on either side right now. Unfortunately, you kind of that part towards the end of some sporting events where it's kind of obvious of what, what's eventually going to happen here. But again, a great fight from Riverdale, a team that was 5-5-2 five, five, and two, seven games ago, currently sitting at 12-5-2, seven wins in a row, a couple tough matchups in the playoffs where they knocked off Van Buren, knocked off Bluffton, even knocked off a pretty good Allen East team, 3-0 in the second round. Yeah, and it's something you build on then. You, you got to the regionals, which a lot of schools, that's a goal, you know. My my daughter, who's only a freshman, was, you know, not quite sure how tournament play works, and 
we were talking about today. It's like, well, you're down to the 16 teams, six, you know, the top 16 teams in uh, in the state, you know, for each division. So it's definitely something to be proud of. Hopefully, you know, you can build off that for next year. And another shot from deep from Riverdale. Right into the paws of Emma Brinkman. Three minutes to play. Riverdale moving it up the left. It's taken away by Maggie Verhoff. Pass was cut out by Shea Berger. Ottawa Glendorf back line taken away by Madison Hovist. Now Megan Horseman knocks it forward, but out for Riverdale throw. Some substitutes entering the game. Atlin or Atlee from Vent and Brooke Dernberger checking in. Well, OG hasn't really subbed. I think they're just content on keep it, keeping the main girls in these last couple of minutes, possessing a little bit, and, and looking forward to moving on to Saturday. But. That game Saturday will be in Tiffin, scheduled for noon as it stands. Opponent to be determined. It's a rare misplay by OG there to send the ball out of bounds and give Riverdale a chance for a throw in and maybe get it on their in their offensive third here a bit. Dornberger, heavy touch taken away by the Titans. Knocked forward for Erford who can't get a handle on it, so it's out for a Falcon throw. Again, a thank you to our school board sponsor tonight. Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Thank you to the Bacchanetta Athletic Department for their hospitality and this fantastic press box. Great facility here at Wapak. New turf, new press box. Yeah, they're still playing here. Their boys are football still playing. They got another game this week, round two then. They're home again, so they're getting a lot of use out of this field, which is what you want. Uh, just across midfield, so a free kick coming up for the Titans. Sounds like with the other possible game that they're playing into, sounds like it'll be Woodmore. We heard some guys down down the way a bit on that, so. And that is it from Wapak. Your final score, the Titans, three, Riverdale, nothing. Two goals from Mackenzie Recker tonight. One goal from Lily Hazelman, and a great performance from the Ottawa Glendorf Titans, but also a great performance from Riverdale. As we talked about, they fall to 12. Six and two, a fantastic end of their season in which they won seven in a row to get to this point. The Titans moved to 18, one and two, and still some work to be done. Yep, best of luck to them, and hopefully we keep a local team uh, move, moving forward. And as you said, maybe we can get one with a state title here. So. They will play at noon in Tiffin on Saturday. It's against Whit Whitmore or Woodmore? I'm hearing two different You're things right. here at the press well, box. Whitmore, but way. Uh, Whitmore, I think, is D1 Toledo, and I don't think that's a soccer school, so I'm thinking Woodmore, but we'll have to look into that. <laughs> By the time you watch this game, you can easily pull out your phone or your computer and figure it out. Again, a thank you to our scoreboard sponsor, tonight's Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alt. Thank you to the Wapak Athletic Department. Thanks to Jacob O'Neill for working the camera and setting up all the equipment tonight, and as always, a thank you to you, the viewer, for tuning in to High School Sports on WOSN. One more time, your final here in Wapak, the Titans 3, 
The Falcons zero for Brady Overhold. I've been Evan Skilleter signing off. Have a great night and God bless.